Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You're watching South Asia Newsline and here are the top stories we're tracking for you. PM Modi conferred with highest honours of Fiji and Papua New Guinea. Situation going to be worse than Sri Lanka, says Pakistanis over economic crisis. And Taliban says travel ban on its leaders affecting ties with the world. And now for all the details. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi was on Monday conferred with the highest civil honours of Papua New Guinea and the Fiji during his visit to attend the third India-Pacific Islands Cooperation Summit, FIPIC. The honour was conferred to the Indian PM by both the nations in recognition of his global leadership and spearheading the cause of Global South. During the FIPIC summit, PM Modi announced a 12-step action plan by India for the Pacific Island nations and reaffirmed India's commitment to strengthen the partnership. Papua New Guinea's Prime Minister James Marape also asked PM Modi to advocate for their issues and called him the leader of the Global South. The issues that are facing the Pacific Island nations, especially the smaller ones amongst us, are had in its right context and given support by you, the leader of the Global South. And I put to you as the leader of the third realm, the third group, the third block of nation that must emerge. Those are the emerging nations and we will rally behind your leadership at global, for global forums. Later in the day, PM Modi reached Australia, the last leg of his three-nation tour. He scheduled to hold bilateral meeting with Australian counterpart Anthony Albanese and address the India diaspora in Sydney during the three-day visit. And the third G20 Tourism Working Group meeting began on Monday in Srinagar, the summer capital of the Indian Territory of Jammu and Kashmir, amid tight security. This is the only working group meeting taking place in Srinagar as part of the G20 efforts by India, the current chair of the diplomatic bloc. A series of meetings have been organized across the country in the run-up to the summit in New Delhi in September. However, China, an all-season ally of Pakistan, is missing the three-day event in Kashmir Valley. Beijing had early objected to India holding the meeting in Srinagar, calling it a disputed region. New Delhi, reacting sharply to the statement, has said it is free to hold meetings in its own territory. Well, Pakistan's ex-PM and opposition PTI chief Imran Khan has claimed there are 80% chances of his arrest on Tuesday when he will be in Islamabad to pursue pre-arrest bail in various cases. Talking to CNN, Khan alleged the ruling coalition was aligned with the army in dismantling the democratic system to keep him out. He said he had no conflict with the establishment and added how could someone win by taking on their own army. Khan also raised concerns over his party workers getting arrested and the action on his supporters, which he said is aimed at dismantling his party. This comes as the Pakistan government has decided to prosecute protesters who were involved in arson under the Army Act after violence erupted on May 9th following Khan's arrest in a craft case. And as Pakistan faces its worst ever economic crisis amid a critical IMF funding delay, specter of a potential default looms large. The situation has shattered hopes of revival amongst most Pakistanis. A report. Residents across Pakistan, which posted its highest ever inflation at 36.4% in April, have expressed they are worried for the future amid the ongoing economic crisis with no hopes of revival. Earlier this month, credit rating agency Moody's Investor Service said Pakistan faces the risk of default without an IMF bailout and its financial options beyond June are uncertain. Locals in Karachi said the ongoing political instability has worsened the situation. Karachi ke awam ke baare mein dekh raho kitne load shedding chal rahi hai pani ke dar masle hain load shedding ke masle hain koi bhi nahi bol raha hai isko. Acha hamara karbar bilkul tabah ho gaya aur maishiyat kahan jayegi? मेषर श्रीलंका से बुरा हाल होने वाला है भाई हमारा जिस तरीके से मामला चल रहे इस बात पर कुछ नहीं हो रहा कि मुल्क में स्टेबिलिटी के लिए कोई मुजाकर किए जाए ये स्टेबिलिटी आएगी यही डॉलर नीचे आ जाएगा यही कारोबार बढ़ जाएगा लेकिन अभी इन्होंने जिस तरह का मामला किए हुए हैं तो कारोबारी हालात बहुत खराब है लोग बहुत परेशान है द स्टेट बैंक ऑफ पाकिस्तान लास्ट फ्राइडे सेट द जीडीपी ग्रोथ वाज लाइकली टू रिमेन सिग्निफिकेंटली लोअर दिस फाइनेंशियल ईयर 
The IMF conditions to resume funding stalled since November have included painful fiscal adjustments such as withdrawal of subsidies, increases in electricity, gas tariffs and oil prices. Taliban spokesman Zabiullah Mujahid has said that the existing travel ban on the leaders of the Islamic Emirate are affecting ties with foreign countries. Mujahid expressed hope that the restrictions will be removed soon as the issue is only causing mistrust. Last August, the UN Security Council failed to reach an agreement on whether to extend travel exemptions for 13 members of the Islamic Emirate. It, however, allowed acting Foreign Minister Amir Khan Muttaki to travel to Islamabad this month to meet his counterparts from China and Pakistan. The international community has continued disengagement with the Taliban over the issue of rights of women and girls as the group has put restrictions on their education and jobs. And Nepal's former Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Ali assailed the government in a debate over its policies and programs in the parliament on Sunday. In its annual plan before the unveiling of the budget on May 29th, the government has stated the economy is getting back on track. Ali, the chief of CPN UML party, said that the government is acting like Nero, who played the flute while Rome was burning. He said that economic indicators pointed that the country's economy was facing recession. But the government has not even realized this fact in the document. The National Statistics Office earlier this month said the $40 billion economy could grow by just 1.68% this year compared to a government target of 8% due to a contraction in manufacturing, construction and trade. Experts say a lack of sound policy and prolonged political instability has taken a toll on the economy. And as heatwave conditions persist in parts of India, people were seen drinking cold beverages and bathing in water bodies to protect themselves from the heat. Take a look. People across India on Monday drank cold beverages and bathed in rivers to keep their bodies cool as the heat wave has tightened its grip over the region. While juice in Grand Flap beverage kiosk provided relief to commuters in the scorching sun in Patna city, people in Chandigarh ate ice creams and sipped cold drinks to tackle the hot weather with the temperatures rising beyond 40 degrees Celsius. <laughs> गर्मी में जैसे सुबह गांधी मैदान आए बहुत ज्यादा गर्मी लग रहा है सत्तू पीने से पेट भी ठंडा हुआ स्वास्थ्य भी ठीक रहा Meanwhile people in northern Prayagraj also resorted to taking a dip in river Ganga as the temperature hovered above 40 degrees Celsius Summers in India are a difficult time when soaring temperatures lead to diseases and sometimes even deaths भैया गर्मी बहुत ज्यादा ये समझ लीजिए जैसे ऊपर से तापमान नहीं एकदम से अंगारे बरस रहे हो इतना ज्यादा इंसान यहाँ गर्मी से परेशान हो चुका है हर व्यक्ति को आप यहाँ देख लीजिए दूर दूर तक यहाँ ज्यादा से ज्यादा भीड़ देखेगी हर इंसान आया है नहा रहा है Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.